uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by Stevie Baxter and Dr. Ralph Pym from the Sporting Pursuit. They are currently partnering with the Ross County Academy looking at talent, leadership and character development. Stevie, Ralph, thank you for taking the time to join me today. We'll get a, a bit of background on you both to begin with. Stevie, we'll, we'll start with you, former coach, now turned Chief Encouragement Officer. <laughs> a little bit about your, your journey with the Sporting Pursuit. Yeah, so th first of all, thanks for uh, giving us the opportunity to, to chat this morning. Um, really, really uh, a pleasure uh, to join you. Um, yeah, Chief Encouragement Officer. Uh, I like to do things a little bit differently. Um, you know, I, I started a business around about five years ago, um, now called The Sporting Pursuit. And um, it's, a, it's a business that has allowed me to, to use 25, 30 years worth of experience of, of international sport. I have been really, really lucky to work with some fantastic people. Uh, one of those that we're going to hear of uh, in, in a second with, with uh, Ralph. Um, but I've been really fortunate to have been able to travel the world with my first love, which has been uh, football. It's always been my passion. Um, as a youngster, I, I was obsessed with football. I loved football. And um, I, I, I played to an okay standard, um, but I was kind of stuck between ability and ambition. I had loads of ambition, uh, not so much uh, ability in terms of the technical stuff. And, um, and when I was 18, sort of 16, 17, 18, um, just coming to the end of um, sort of high school, uh, a coach had said to me who... who was one of my coaches previously. He said, Stevie, he said, I think you would be a good coach. And uh, I was kind of taken aback by that because he'd actually just released me about the week or so before um, from a player. But he said, look, I think you'll make a better coach than you will a player. So, so my coaching career uh, sort of started way back in sort of 1996, 1997. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to work with a number of different academies as a, as a coach. Been lucky enough to work with uh, UEFA, FIFA, some national governed bodies, represent Scotland and New Zealand as a coach. Uh, and I've gone to the World Cup, and the Under-20s World Cup uh, in, in 2012. So the Sport and Pursuit basically allowed me to, to shape all the experiences that I've had as a coach all the way around the world in order to help me support other people be the best they can be. No matter if that's a coach, a parent, a player, uh, no matter if that's in school, sport and life. And, uh, and as I say, the, the Sport and Pursuit has kind of, I would say, grown and developed over the last um, five or six years. And uh, as I say, it's an absolute privilege to, to now be working with the Academy at Ross County. And Stevie, it really has been your baby. You've watched it go from the infant and, and now it, it, it's almost at the stage where it's a fully grown adult because you've had lots of experience. You've engaged with lots of different organisations as well. Yeah, I have. It's, you know, for me, uh, when, I, when I returned back to Scotland uh, around about, I mean, come up for five years now, um, a lot of people got in touch with me just to, just to pick my brain, really, you know, find out about my experiences. What did you do? What did you learn? What did you see? What did you bring back? What was the cultures like? What was the people like? How did you adapt to language? How did you adapt to different environments? And, um, and I was forever getting invited for, for cups of tea and cups of coffee. And, and uh, there was a couple of people that said to me, said, look, I, I, think, you have a, I think you have an opportunity here to, to grow a business. The information that you have, the experience that you've picked up, the knowledge that you have. And, um, you know, a lot, a lot of people, my teachers used to say this when I was younger as well, I liked to talk. <laughs> so I've been able to turn uh, maybe a not so good habit when I was at school into a business for myself. And, uh, and yeah, it, it really has grown. Um, not just working within sport, but working with business, working with charity, working with education. Um, you know, it's, it's about providing people the opportunity to, to see how they can become the best version of themselves, no matter if that's in a boardroom, a changing room, or a classroom. And, um, you know, the frameworks that, that we have are, are, you know, so flexible and so adaptable to, to any culture. It's, um, it's a real easy fit, and, and um, I'm really proud of it. Well, Stevie, thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. Um, I'll move on to your sidekick, Dr. Ralph Pym, who joins us from the, the Grand Rapids out in Michigan right now. 
Ralph, there's very few people I've met in this field that have uh, more experience than you. You've gone from military academies to educational institutions um, to sports organizations and bodies across the world. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Well, thank you, Dale. And first of all, I am very, very excited to be working with Stevie and also with Ross County Football Club and the Academy. Um, I have had an opportunity to talk with you previously and, 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 and Stephen Ferguson and Gordon Duff. And um, as I listen to all the different coaches and the people that I've met, I've been so impressed. And I think it's, it, I, I'm very selective with the different organizations or teams that I work with. And, and to me, this is an ideal fit. And it, it goes a little bit, bit back to my background and, and my history because I've, I've spent my entire career in sport, um, initially as a player, but then as a coach, as an educator, professor. I was a director of competitive sports uh, at the United States Military Academy. You mentioned my, the military experience. I was there 12 years. And my leader team and I were in charge of the athletic experiences of over 3,500 cadets. And every cadet or every student at West Point is, a kid, is an athlete because of the importance that athletics and sport teaches a young person as far as leadership, as far as character development. It basically, I like to say this, I think sport is a microcosm of life. All the experiences that you have in sport are similar to things that you will be facing in life. And so at a very young age, with the right coaching, I believe that young people can learn life lessons that, that greatly impact them. At this point in my life, I retired from the United States Military Academy nine years ago, and now I've been doing consulting work, and I've been working at different uh, universities throughout the United States. I, was, uh, I coached at every level in men's basketball except the NBA, so my background is not in football. Uh, as far as my sport, it, it was basketball. But really what I'm doing now has nothing to do directly with the X's and O's. It's helping people find ways to bring their best and be their best for the greater good of the team. So really what I'm doing now is I'm working in, in various countries. I, I worked in Singapore. I'm currently still working in um, New Zealand for Sport New Zealand, Australia. And I'm excited now to be able to have the opportunity to spend time working with coaches and players in, in Scotland. So this, this to me, I'm excited about it. And what I hope that I can bring along with Stevie is helping young people get a better understanding, a deeper understanding of who they are, their strengths, their improvement areas, an understanding of why they're playing the sport. And at the same time, what we're hoping to provide is a lot of different skills that will help them find ways to be the best that they can be. And we'll, we'll work on having a common language that everyone can speak and understand what, what those words mean. And number one, we want to change those words into visible behaviors that produce the results that all of us want. So I'm excited to be here and, and looking forward to uh, working with Stevie again. We work together in New Zealand and I think the world of him, I love his energy. He brings so much and I know that he's gonna be a key difference maker with Ross County. Well, Ralph, with the time difference and everything, thank you for taking the time to <laughs> join us this morning. Um, guys, I'm, I'm just going to jump straight into the project itself. Stevie, what should an academy player's parents, coaches expect from the sporting pursuit? It's, it's almost stage one. You know, what, what does it look like for our academy here at Ross County? 
I think the, the expectations, um, you know, from from a parent por- perspective, is that we're gonna we're gonna work with every single uh, player um, in a different uh, way. Um, predominantly academies, because of the nature of the beast and, and the time constraints that we have, um, you know, we tend to focus on the sort of what I call the balls, bibs uh, and markers, you know, Ralph alluded to, to the X and O's, you know, and there's a, there's a real focus and a need uh, to, to help players understand the, the technical and tactical side uh, of the game. And, um, and the cool thing about that is that every single player that has been selected within the Ross County Academy uh, show that, that they have a, a level of talent and that their level of talent for playing football is, you know, slightly higher and, and better than, than the average person. However, with, with displaying um, talent and, and having a talent, um, talent only gets you so far. Uh, myself and Ralph talk about how talent is an indicator. It's an indicator, really, of your potential. It's an indicator on how far you can go. Um, if you just rely on your talent and your talent alone, however, then you'll probably find out that as you develop and as you grow older, people will catch up and their level of ability of the technical tactical side will, will probably catch up. What we do is we look at sort of three key thematic areas. So we bring talent and we use that talent that the children have and the players have but then absorb that around two other key factors, and that's around leadership and character development. So when we talk about leadership, it starts off with yourself, you know, as an individual, uh, and self-leadership, you know, that's the cornerstone of being able to be successful in any walk of life, how you lead yourself. And what we do is we work with the coaches and the parents and the players to look at ways in which individuals can walk onto the pitch and have the ability to look across um, at their teammates, look across at their opposition and say, okay, today we're going to play a game and I'm talented, but you're going to have to be better than me up here as well as down at my feet because I'm a competitor and I'm going to compete and I'm going to compete from, compete from the first minute to the 90th uh, and I'm going to do everything I can to, to be the best version of myself, to help myself and to help the team. We then look at the character side and, and we look at character in, in two different ways. We look at um, character as performance and character as in moral. So when we talk about performance character, this is about all the character traits that make me me and the character traits that allow me to perform at my best. So therefore, am I determined? Am I hungry? Am I doing everything that I can to be the best version of myself on the pitch. And then we look at the moral side of things and we look at it in terms of these are the, the sort of character strengths that allow us to be able to connect with our teammates and build relationships with our teammates. So, you know, if I look left and I look right on the football pitch, do I trust the individuals that are next to me? Do, am, I, am I trustworthy myself? Am I going to do what I say I'm going to do? Am I going to do the best and be the best version of myself um, for my teammates? And what we do is we take those um, traits, we, we look at the talent, we look at the leadership, and we look at the character, and we say, right, okay, we'll break these down into words, and words are fine. However, how do we then transfer those into actions? So when we talk about being hardworking, what does hardworking look like? How do we define it? And do we understand what hardworking looks like for us all? And therefore, I can be hardworking in my personal life, in the family home, at school, at work, on the football pitch. So we take these words and help the players and the coaches and the parents understand how we take those words and transfer them into actions on the pitch pre, during and post, whether that's training or whether that's match day. And that could be everything from taking sole responsibility uh, for packing my own bag, cleaning my own boots, making sure I have a water bottle filled, to helping coaches set up um, sessions, and ultimately being a leader on the pitch. So what is a leader? What does a leader look like? How do I act? How do I behave? How do I encourage, inspire, connect and empower my teammates? to also be not only a self-leader, but a great team participant as well. So I think 
what the what the parents will 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 probably see from us is that we're going to dig really deep into the minds of the players and to get the players to really think about who they are, find out about what their goals are, and help them systematically take little steps on a journey to hopefully achieve those goals. That might be an under-11 player going into the under-12s and being successful and moving into transition in Ross County. Or that might be having a, a goal that at 16 years of age, I maybe want to be scouted from another club uh, and you know, developing our own players within the academy to move on to, to other experiences. Um, so yeah, we're going, to be, we're going to be really working hard with the players on the, the non-balls, bibs and markers side of things. And Ralph, it's going to be an emotional journey for each individual as well because they're going to find out a lot about themselves as, as people and then the parents and coaches subsequently will probably subconsciously have a look at themselves too. Yeah, you know, you're you're completely right. I think that that is one of the beauties of this. And and through the years, as I have been doing this, um, a lot of times we start with the coaches, and 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 or we have the parents involved too. So they actually go through some of the same activities as what their sons and daughters are going to go through. And, and really what's been very interesting through the years is that I've had um, leaders that have worked on my team have said that they've taken a lot of, the, a lot of these different core, the, the, the core concepts I think are pretty universal. The key with the, with the core concepts is they must fit into the the situation, the context, and the culture of the organization. So a lot of these people that I've worked with actually have taken them and put them right, the team building ones, and put them right into their families. Their families build core values. Their families end up defining what those core values look like, the responsibilities that go with it. So really, you're, you're so right. What we're talking about, and that's why I said earlier that I think sport is basically a microcosm of life. So the things that, that Stevie and I will be working with the players certainly will apply with the coaches and also parents, families. The one thing I'd like to jump in with, with um, and say about what Stevie, the points that he was making what I have found one of the most important things, and many people say it's the, the most important psychological factor that will determine success is self-belief and self-confidence. So a lot of what Stevie and I will be working on directly or indirectly will be working and helping with people gain an awareness of who they are and it's very important for them to understand their strengths. I like to call them, I want everyone to know what their signature strengths are. This is me, this is my identity. I know I'm good in this, this, and this. Because I really believe, yes, you have to work on your, your weak areas, but at the same time, everyone needs to maximize those strengths that they do have. And when you do that, there's ways, and we will help players make that transition of recognizing those so that they start building their own self-belief and their confidence. Because I think that is absolutely critical in everything that we're doing with people today. Um, guys, I could, um, if I could just I'm jump in for a second. I'm going to quickly apologize there, right? <laughs> this is the second call I've done with both of you. And I feel myself every time I speak to you, you're just so drawn in. <laughs> There's an incredible chemistry here. Um, if I could just jump in yeah. just for a second, Dale, because I think Ralph alluded to, to a fact earlier on in regards to Ross County being such a good fit, um, not only just for the frameworks and the programs that we provide, but but how we portray ourselves in, in, in life and in everyday life and, and the relationships that, that myself and Ralph uh, have managed to build over the years. 
is that one of the things that hooked us in was the, the vision in which, um, you know, the chairman has at the club and that Stephen and the first team and filters right through the academy is that Ross County is, you know, it's, it's, it's more than a football club. And that's the tagline. It's more than a football club. The ability to connect with the community of Dingwall and to be able to help coaches, players, parents become the best version of themselves. Because, because we all know that, unfortunately, not every player that goes into the footballing academy system comes out the other side as a professional footballer. We just know that because of the numbers. Um, however, if we can help these footballers to give themselves an advantage where they have the ability to have high levels of employability because they know who they are, they have that self-belief, they have that self-confidence, they know what their strengths are, they can leave the academy going, do you know what? I gave it my best. There was, some, there was a reason why I maybe haven't made it yet. However, I have left this academy knowing more about myself more about people and more about how I can get the best out of myself than what I did when I started. And I think for me, that fits in so nicely with how, um, you know, the chairman um, sees the club, you know, being more than a football club. It's about improving the local community and improving the people within that um, area. So, so for me, it's, it's really, really important. That becomes the byproduct um, of that. Ralph, you, you touched on there two, two things that I actually took note of there. You mentioned core concepts and, and self-belief. Are there specialist specific areas that you do want to go into with the young players and, and the coaches to really look at those as, as the key pillars to build the foundation of the programme around? And yes, definitely. Because, and, and, and that's the key piece of it is it, it has to fit within the context and, and the overarching mission, let's say of Ross County, um, the identity that they're striving to build. I wanna make sure that everything that Stevie and I are doing is aligned with those. And I always find that, that it's such a, a lear great learning experience, let's say for myself and also let's say Stevie, as we get to get to have a better understanding and, and Stevie will actually be able to be there watching uh, the players actually talking with the coaches other than through Zoom, which I will be doing. So yes, what we'll try to do is, is, is tailor make this. It looks different everywhere that I have done this. So it, it fits, um, it takes a little bit of time and that's where I've enjoyed the conversations I've had on Zoom with the coaches and being able to listen to the coaches. Two days ago, I had a chance to be on the call and listen to the questions and the responses that the 11 and 12 year old players gave us. That's the type of information because Stevie and I have to meet these players where they are now. And, and so, yes, I think that's, as we listen and, and find out more about them, and we'll gain a better idea of building what we're going to be building over the course of this year. Stevie, just jumping on to what Ralph had mentioned there about the tailoring of each program, is it important that you guys almost conduct a study into each client you've got, you know, remove Ross County from it for a second, but each partner and client that you work with, there has to be that fact and that, that kind of studying of, of each client to understand the needs and the environments that are surrounding those. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, regardless of whether it's in sport, business or military or, or working with charities, I think, First of all, you need to understand um, the, the vision um, of the organization. What is it the, what is it the organization is, is looking to achieve? Um, then from there, how, how does the organization uh, operate? And what added value can, can we bring in um, in order to help um, that organizing, organization succeed? Um, but what I would say is that the business that we're in, regardless of the environment, is that we work with people and we 
try and strive to get the best out of people. And therefore, going into an organization, it's really, really important that, that we build relationships. And, you know, for an example here with Ross County, you know, we've, we've been building uh, the relationships uh, with the academy um, and the senior leaders with, uh, with Stephen Ferguson for, you know, six, seven months now. You know, before we get started, we need to understand exactly what it is the organization's uh, trying to achieve for us to then be able to bring in our experience to say, well, look, here's where we think we can add value. The unique thing about this is that each team from the academy, from the livings right the way through to the 18s will have different needs. Every single player within the academy from the 11s to the 18s will also have different needs. So it's not just a, a one size fits all. Um, you know, the, the sessions that we've done so far, the engagement has been so good. Um, you know, Monday with 11s and 12s, you know, the, the conversations, the responses, their ability to communicate over Zoom with people they've never met before, asking them challenging questions about themselves and then responding in a way that kind of made myself and Ralph sit back and go, wow, okay, you know, we've, we've got some really good people here. We've got people that are open to uh, challenge and, and open to, to change. So I think first and foremost, yes, let's go and find out exactly everything that we can um, about uh, the organization. Let's find out about their people. Um, <laughs> one, of the, um, one of the things that, that I like to do, um, particularly when I'm meeting a new set of coaching staff, is that normally you go onto courses and you have icebreakers and, and you ask people to talk about themselves. And um, what myself and Ralph do is we, we go and do our research, go and find out lots of stuff about people. And rather than them introduce themselves, we introduce them to themselves and their colleagues. And, uh, and it's amazing the information that you can find. And it is amazing the expression on people's faces when you tell them things about themselves that they'd forgotten about. And, um, you know, again, that, that shows that, you know, there's a human side to what we do. And people can then see, okay, these guys are serious. These guys are actually doing their due, due diligence. They're finding out about us. And we are showing them that we just want to be an extension of what they do. And um, I think Catherine's face of, of one of the coaches, I think she's in the sports science team, she could not believe the information that I was able to put across. The fact that she was a mixed martial, art, mixed martial artist black belt at nine years of age. She, she's shot back. How did you know this? How did you find this information out? So, so again, we, we, we work with people. We are in the people business. You cannot achieve anything in life on your own. You have to work with other people. And, uh, and that's what we do in order to try and bring out the best in everyone. And um, it's certainly something that, um, that I've learned over the years, um, you know, when, when I started to really think about the, the non-balls, bibs and barker side of things. Spent a lot of time on, on the football pitches coaching kids, but I'm thinking this is just a small, small part of it. So... So, yeah. Stevie, I plead with you, never do a background check on me. That <laughs> well, you, funny you should say that. Would you like me to no. roll off a few things? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> see, I, I just want to jump on something probably more cultural than, than Ross County specific. You started the company five years ago, and yeah. before we came on to the interview there, we were having a wee chat beforehand, and we were talking about sure. cultural change um, around the world. And is that something that you've seen more prevalent since you started the company five years ago is, is almost the, the mental and the leadership and the character development side has really been a growth industry and something that is really focused on now within elite clubs, within non-elite clubs, within even amateur clubs. It's something that's really become infectious within sport. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um particularly in Scotland, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to travel the world and uh, live in many countries and, and work in many countries. And, and I actually decided that I wanted to go and invest time in myself uh, to understand myself a bit more and throw myself into other cultures. Um, you know, early, I would say sort of tw towards the end of sort of 2009, 2010, um, I'd been involved with an organisation for a long time. And and I think football in the country was, was very traditional and, and any new methods coming in were, I wouldn't say they were frowned upon, but it was hard to maybe get buy-in because it, it wasn't traditional. And, um, and I, had to, I had to go and 
find other places where, where I could learn more about the things that I thought were important. And, and as I've said already, the, the balls, bibs, markers, technical, tactical side of things is really important. You need that to be able to uh, play the game. However, it's just a small part. So I, um, I moved myself abroad, took myself out comfort zone uh, and went and invested uh, my time into learning. And um, I was able to start kind of really picking up the fact that developing cultures, understanding people, mindset, what is growth mindset? How does growth mindset enable you to achieve? How can this be placed into sport and environments? And it absolutely blew my mind. I, um, I remember having a conversation with Ralph saying that I was once asked to give an elevator pitch, you know, 30 seconds on, on my philosophy and I, I couldn't do it. But I spent a few hours with Ralph and, you know, you just have this connection with someone and you just go, wow, what you're explaining is what I've been trying to explain for the last 10, 15 years in 30 seconds in one paragraph. And, um, and it really showed me that the ability to learn from other cultures and learn from other environments is really important. The, the way in which European coaches and, and other coaches from other countries and other cultures have come into the UK um, and shown that being people-centred, being athlete-centred and putting your athletes at the front and your man management skills or your people development skills you know, allows you to drag so much more out of your teams and so much more out of your individuals. And, you know, I, from a footballing sense, I, I look at the likes of a Jurgen Klopp, you know, and when he first came into to Liverpool, you know, everyone used to say, yeah, he's great at giving hugs, but he's never won anything. You know, and, and he got lambasted one night for a, a Tuesday evening. I think it was maybe Watford or, or somewhere where the full team got together at the end of the game, away from home, went to the supporters and applauded the supporters. What Jurgen Klopp was, was saying was, we're on the start of a journey. And as a team, we are all together. And we need our fans with us. We need our staff with us. We need our science team with us. We need our background team with us, our physios, our admin, the supporters. We all need to be together. And if we all pull together, we can achieve more. Nobody talks about Jurgen, hug, uh, Jurgen Klopp's hugs anymore. They talk about the titles that he's won, the Champions Leagues that he's won. And he's completely changed how Liverpool have been as a club, as an identity, um, as being the nearly team. After all the years of success, I look at guys like that who are now shaping how football is seen, how football is viewed, how coaching is viewed, how teaching is viewed. And now because it's evidence-based that being like that can bring you success, more people want to be like that and therefore they're more open to learning more, taking more information and trying to implement that within uh, a footballing culture that, that was never normally like that. Um, but we are changing and we are moving in the right ways, uh, which, is, which is fantastic. I'd like to jump into your question on, on, on what you just asked, Dale, and, and I'll take it from a, a worldwide perspective. And, and if you look, um, my leader team and I try to study the very best teams, not just in sport, but also, let's say, in the military, in business. And it all comes down to culture. And, and, and what we were finding is that people are seeking a competitive edge and where they're doing it now, today, they're doing it with the development of mental skills, they're doing it in the area of character development, and they're also doing it in the area of leadership development. So years ago when, when TLC was started, okay, fine, that was all geared toward those findings that we were getting and that that's where the talent, leadership, and character comes from. Ralph, uh, Stevie, both of you, You've obviously you've had sessions so far with the under 11s, the under 12s, the staff, and and a few of the parents as well. Stevie, I'll come to you first. You know what what's been the kind of most insightful um, parts of the response? Because you said earlier you have had a good response. What what are you posing to 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 the different groups of people within the program? We're asking we're asking them questions, um, Dale. We're we're asking them questions that they they maybe don't normally get asked. Um, we are 
we are being honest first and foremost and we we're trying to build um, trust in our relationship um, at this moment in time through through a screen so the the sort of responses that we've had is that there is there's a real enthusiasm there's a real enthusiasm from the coaches and from the parents and the players to provide the best opportunities and the best environment that, that the club can to help every individual thrive. That, that's an absolute given. The work that Stephen and Gordon and their wider team do uh, within the academy is, is just fantastic. And, um, and they've given us, they've given myself and Ralph free reign to go, look, we believe in you, we trust you. The conversations we've had for the last six months, we, we want to invest, we want to make sure that, that we can provide these opportunities to learn uh, for the kids. And, and what we've received back through the screen so far, the 11s and 12s, the, they were a very quiet bunch at the start. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of thinking there's, there's a guy here from Dundee that we don't really understand. And then we've got another guy with an American accent. And, you know, but straight away, we, we just, we, we love teaching. We love working with people. We love trying to find the balance between um, teaching and humor and fun and learning. But always at, the, always at the front of our mind is, is the person in front of us truly thinking about themselves? Are they truly thinking about the information that we're bringing on? And are they, are they wanting and do they have the will to continue to, to sort of develop and succeed? And the great thing about any Zoom session, you know, other platforms are available out there, but any Zoom session is that if you know that you have questions and you have engagement at the end based on what you're talking about, then you know you're on to a winner. As soon as you get to the end and if you ask if there's any questions and nobody has anything for you, you know you're maybe struggling. So, you know, the enthusiasm, the engagement, the information coming back, the honesty. Um, and, um, and it was great because we could tell that some of these questions were never asked because when the 11s and 12s were receiving the question, they were sitting looking at the screen and you can see them going, Mum, Dad, what, what? Oh no, it's me. It's got to answer this. I've got to think about this, and and then you can also hear some of the other other mums and dads in the background going, "Well, think about it. What are you good at?" You know. <laughs> so so it, it's not just about us allowing um, or being allowed into people's living rooms across Dingwall via Zoom, um, but what I'm noticing is there's there's even more of a connection between player and parent because. Parents are sitting behind the screen, not able to see, and still listening and engaging and, and still trying to prompt. So there's buy-in, which is absolutely fantastic. And, and as Ralph said, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to seeing some of the teams this weekend uh, play uh, St. Johnson uh, away from home. Um, so I'll be able to see them um, in the flesh, which is, which is great. And, um, and, and long may it continue. You know, as long as there is excitement, enthusiasm, buy-in, uh, and people start to to understand and, and see development in themselves, then, then great. Ralph, just come to you to follow up on that one. You've obviously been delivering this kind of program for a long time. Do you still get absorbed and, and intrigued by some of the responses that you get now in 2021, opposed to all these years that you've been right. in military, um, sports institutions and sports organisations across the world? Yeah, I definitely do. That's the beauty of it. I mean, that's, that's why I'm so passionate about it is because of the interactions that, that I'm able to have through sport with basically people of all ages. But um, what I noticed is, is an openness to learn. I mean, people seem to be very open-minded. Um, when you ask the right questions and you start getting some responses, um, you could feel the energy. You, you, could, you could almost see uh, that sparkle in someone's eye, like when they were responding to the question that Stevie asked. Um, it's, it's an exciting introduction right now. The key is, is going to be to really find the, the, the most important areas and the needs that these young people have right now. And, and, and then make sure that Stevie and I and the coaches with their help are right on where we can, we can give them 
support. We can challenge them. We can be right there with them so that these obstacles that they, they, they're, they're going to face, that they can develop that, like I said, confidence that they will find a way. I'd like to just say one other driving point that, that why I'm involved with this is when I feel, when I talk with, uh, when I talk with Stephen, when I talk with Gordon, when, I, when we had our first conversation, I, I just sense that, that, that the commitment of trying to get this club to be the very best that they can be. And I talked about belief and I talked about the importance of valuing or knowing yourself and valuing yourself. But really the number one point is getting people to value the jersey. Value that jersey, that club, that team, whoever I'm working with, I want to build this so that this is basically a culture that is united, that everyone is pulling the rope in the same way, then every day, whether it's training, whether it's a match, when they put that jersey on, there's incredible pride. And there's personal responsibility that goes with putting that jersey on that everyone accepts. And they're working their tail off to make sure that those behaviors are seen every day on the field. Well, Dr. Ralph Pym, Stevie Baxter, thank you so much for taking the time to join me this morning. Uh, representing the Sporting Pursuit, who are now our new uh, academy partner focusing on talent, leadership and character development. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm more enthusiastic now than I was the first time and I don't think I could be more enthusiastic. But um, thank you for your time. We look forward to tracking your progress and we will speak to you guys again soon. Thank you again.